Hi, this is Al Williams. I've got a rocket ship model here and it's sitting on a 20 millimeter high base. And I pulled the rocket ship model from Classic Rocket on Thingiverse by Botmaster. And these are really cool because if you slice them as a vase or a spiral slice, sometimes they call it, it actually just goes around and around and around and makes a single plastic thread. So instead of cutting it up into layers, it just makes one thread that goes around and around and around until it makes the entire shape. And so that's very cool. The problem is, if you look at my model with the base on it, I don't want the base to be hollow. I want it to have the normal infill like a regular solid object. I just want it to be hollow on the rocket ship part. So how can I do that? Well, most of the slicers that I know of, at least, won't do that readily. But they'll do either of them. They just won't do both at the same time. So I've got slicer here. And you'd probably have settings, like a normal setting, and you could slice it once that way. And then you'd also come in here and make a setup with the spiral vase setting checked. That's going to set it to have one perimeter and hollow and do that kind of spiral type of uh, hollow printing that we were talking about. And so I would slice it again and save that as a separate G-code file. And I've already done that. I've got two G-code files that I'll show you. The other thing you have to do is you've got to go look at your start and end G-code. And depending on your slicer, that may be in a different spot or may look different than this. But you need to, at the end of the start code, you need to put a comment, semicolon, which is a comment, percent, 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 G-blend start with an underscore in it. And at the beginning of the end G-code, you need to put a semicolon, percent, 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 G-blend end. So you can probably figure out we're going to merge the solid file and the hollow file and we don't need the start and the end codes on both. So if you put these comments in here and they're harmless to leave in for regular use, that will tell GBlend, which is the software I'm going to use, to not pay attention to this part of the code and not pay attention to this part and only pay attention to the parts in the middle, which is the object we actually want to build. So I'm going to assume I've already done those slices, and in fact I have. I'll show you what that looks like in a text editor here. You can see I've got my start g-code and my end g-code. I just copied those out. Some slicers will have variables in some part of these, like it'll say, well, uh, here's open brace temperature or something, closed brace. You would need to change that out to have real numbers in it because this isn't going to get processed by the slicer. This is going to get processed by G-Blend. Uh, Cura, in particular, will frequently have variables in there. And then here's the solid version. And you can see there's our G-Blend start. And down at the bottom, there'll be the G-Blend end. And here's the spiral version. Now, you could manually go in and figure out where the 20 millimeter mark is on this file and then go find the same spot in this file and do a little cut and paste magic and you could do that but I'm kind of lazy so I wrote a program and it's on GitHub. Uh, I wrote it a while back although I just recently updated it and made it a little better and it's called GBlend. So you can get the source code for it. There's also a bin directory that has uh, binaries for Windows 32-bit and 64-bit Linux, and it's not a very complicated program, so if you have the kind of normal system libraries, it should work just fine. So what we're going to do is, once we've got the start and end code, and that would just stay the same forever, we cut our model up as many times as we've got sections we want different settings for. And here's the G-code for the solid model, and you can see the box is all kind of infilled, and then the circular part gets built up layer by layer by layer with the infill in it. And that was the solid. And if you go look at the spiral one, each layer is just a little dot, right? And the layers are very closely spaced. So the z-axis will be moving up all the time as it draws that little single thread out. So we want to merge those two together. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use gblend. So I've already set up a gblend command line here. I'm going to execute gblend. I've got an equal sign my start G code. We'll talk about what that means in a second. I've got an open bracket and then my first G code file, which is the solid, that's the base. The base is 20 millimeters high. So you can guess that that 20 is 20 millimeters and you'd be right. 
and then I've got the spiral G code, that's the hollow one, a closed bracket, another equal sign, and the end G code. And then that just captures the output into a file. That's the file we're going to send to the printer, rocketstat.g code. So the equal sign tells GBlend, hey, the next file, take it and just stick it in the output. Whatever's in there, it goes in there. This open bracket says, take the start of the next file and start copying it in there until we get to some end condition. What's that end condition? It's the 20 millimeter mark. So at 20 millimeters, I'm going to stop copying the solid part, and I'm going to start with the next file, which is the spiral part, and it's going to wear, start at where? 20 millimeters. Now there's some other syntax you can use, like if you wanted to skip over some parts of this, or if you you know wanted to change the starting points and things like that, but for most cases, this will be fine. And then if you had more, maybe you wanted to print the top of the rocket differently, you could say, okay, that'll go up to however many millimeters that is, and then there'll be a third file, and then a closed bracket, right? So the closed bracket basically says go all the way to the end, and then probably we're done, unless you're trying to do some fancy editing or stack things up or whatever. And then again, the equal sign says take the next file and just copy it over. Well, that's the NG code. So the final file is going to have the start G code, the first 20 millimeters of that G code file, the 20 millimeters to the end of this G code file, and then end G code, which is just the global end stuff. So that file is ready to go to the printer. And if you go print it, sure enough, you get a 20 millimeter high solid base. Well, it's not solid, it's whatever the infill set on the first G-code file here is set to. And then you get the rest of it in a nice hollow spiral base. So there's a lot of different things you can do with that. Uh, I'd encourage you to go to GitHub and actually read the README text, which talks about the other uh, things that you can do and the syntax of all the what happens if there's a number after the brace and things like that. Uh, there's also a lot of command line options that you can do to modify how things work. So I hope you give it a shot, and if you get bugs or comments, uh, feel free to leave them on GitHub, and thanks for watching.